From an amazing camera quality to a sleek looking design to its powerful custom Google chip, this phone pretty much does it all. But there are some things missing from this phone that would probably make a lot of people want to skip it over. In this video, I'm gonna talk about my experience with the Google Pixel 6a and if I think this phone is worth it. The Google Pixel 6a looks a lot like its older siblings and it's clearly a Google phone. This phone has a plastic back that could easily pass for glass and a sleek design that we're used to. It has a two-tone vibe going on with the camera visor and I'll talk about the cameras in a bit, but the edges are flat and overall, this phone feels really good in the hand. To outsiders looking in, you could probably look at this phone and not believe that it costs only $449 in comparison to its older siblings that pretty much have the exact same design. My biggest issue with the design is not the way it looks itself, but the fact that it can be a fingerprint magnet. I've noticed a lot of smudges on the back of it after using it for about a week and it's gotten kind of annoying. More concerning to a lot of people would be the fact that the plastic back might be a little bit more prone to scratches. Again, it's not glass, it's plastic, so that means that it can be scratched. And I've seen a lot of people talking about getting their Pixel 6a scratched. In general though, this phone looks really good and it's not too much of a change from what we've seen before. And that's not a bad thing. The Pixel 6a has a 6.1 inch AMOLED display that in general looks pretty good. The colors are great on the phone, it gets bright enough outdoors, and pictures just pop off the screen. The biggest downside of the display is the fact that it's only a 60 hertz display. And I only said it's a downside because I feel like this is probably a problem for a lot of people. But personally speaking, I don't see a problem with it. Coming from the iPhone 13 mini, which has a 60 hertz display, it's not even a downgrade to move over to the Pixel 6a. But if you're used to a higher refresh rate on the phone, you're probably going to notice this. Now also while researching the phone, I've seen a lot of people also comment on the fact that this phone kind of stutters and of course because it's a 60 hertz display the stuttering is more noticeable but personally speaking i've not noticed any stuttering at all on this phone when using it and scrolling through it in my everyday use it gets very very bright outdoors and i like watching content on it everything just looks really crisp and it pops off the phone let's talk about the camera so if you look at the name of the phone and the branding of the pixel line it's called a Pixel. That should really tell you that this phone has a very strong focus on the camera. And I can say that the Pixel 6a does not disappoint. The Pixel 6a has a 12.2 megapixel main camera and a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera. To note though, this is not the same sensor as the more expensive Pixel 6. And actually going far back, the Pixel 6a also has the exact same sensor as the Pixel 3. But that's not too much of a problem because the pictures out of this look really, really good. For my use, I've been very impressed with the camera on this phone. Colors look accurate, pictures are sharp, and everything pops well. I can honestly say that these photos look better than the photos coming out of the iPhone 13 mini, and I usually consider the iPhone the king of mobile photography. It also has the ability to zoom into photos, but you should note that there's no telephoto lens on this camera. It's just cropping into the 12 megapixel image, but I definitely like the results. It's just think that it still looks pretty good. At the front though, you get an eight megapixel selfie camera, and this camera has a bunch of different modes. Same with the back, you get portrait and a bunch of different modes that you can navigate through on the phone. My gripe with it is, although the pictures look really good in terms of color, sharpness, there's been a little bit of weirdness going on with the phone. Take a look here. I don't know what it is, but the sharpness is super turned up, and I think my skin looks horrible in this photo. Does anyone know a good dermatologist? I can take 
50 photos with this phone and they all look good, but then I get a couple of them that the sharpness is just crazy overdone. My skin looks a little bit strange and overall the picture is just a no-no. For video, this phone has the ability to record video in 4K and the video quality is quite impressive, but I feel like it seemed kind of wobbly when I was recording. I don't know why or how to explain it better, but it seemed as if there was rolling shutter while filming it, but then as I looked back at it, it looked completely normal. It just felt really weird recording it. But in general, if I had to make this phone my main camera, I wouldn't be too upset because again, the pictures and the videos out of the Pixel 6a look really good. The Google Pixel 6a has some pretty cool features powered by Android. And as a self-admitted Apple fanboy, I continue to be impressed by how well the Android OS system really works on the phone. It's always been my favorite OS and Google has nailed it on the Pixel 6a. There's some cool features like being able to erase objects from a photo and more. This really shows the power of Google's chip and also what makes Android OS superior to iOS. You can just do a lot more with Android OS. The Pixel 6a also has some solid battery life as well. I can make it last for a full day if I wanted to, and I don't really get charge anxiety when I'm out and about. However, the charging system on the phone isn't the greatest for two main reasons. One, it only charges at up to 18 watts per hour, which is kind of slow if you're in a pinch and you want to charge up the phone after using it all day. But also, more importantly, it doesn't come with wireless charging. And I feel like there are a lot of other budget Android phones that have this feature, and it wasn't too much to make this phone more appealing to a lot of people. Personally speaking though, it's not too much of a problem because I do enjoy plugging in my phones and not dealing with wireless charging. That's just my personal preference, so this wasn't too much of a deal breaker for me. All right, so overall at 449, this is actually a really, really good phone. Again, it has an amazing amazing design, an amazing display, it has an amazing camera, and it's stock Android for you Android enthusiasts. As someone that uses an iPhone as my main phone, I genuinely enjoy having a pure and hassle-free experience. And the Pixel 6a is just that. Of course, there are downsides of the 6a, and that is that there's no wireless charging, the plastic may scratch over time, and a few minor quirks but overall, I'd say that this is probably the best Android phone that you can get for under $500 in terms of what you're paying and what you get with the phone. So what do you think about the Pixel 6a? Are you really interested in that camera or are you probably gonna skip this one? Let me know in the comments down below. I appreciate all the comments and all that. Thank you so much for watching and you just be out.